We'll look now at equations of motion. So these apply whenever acceleration is constant. Okay, so this is, uh, it's not going to apply whenever something is accelerating and then it's decelerating and then accelerating again. Each bit of motion, maybe you could apply a, an equation of motion, but the acceleration has to be constant. So your four equations, V equals U plus AT, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, S equals UT plus a half AT squared, and S equals a half upon U plus V times T. U then stands for the initial velocity, and that's in meters per second. V then is the final velocity, and that's again in meters per second. A is the acceleration, and that's meters per second squared. S is displacement, and it's in meters, and T is time, and it's in seconds. Now, you will sometimes see in questions, um, instead of velocity, they'll say speed, that's fine. And sometimes instead of displacement, they'll say distance again. That's okay. Example one then. Right, we're going to look first of all at horizontal motion. And we'll get on later in um, the course to look at vertical motion, something being dropped from a building or thrown up. So a body is moving at velocity of 3 meters per second and it accelerates uniformly at 2 meters per second for 5 seconds find its final velocity. So get into the habit of writing down U, V, A, S, T, and putting in what we know for this part of the motion. So it starts at three meters per second, and then it accelerates at two meters per second squared, and it's for five seconds. And we want the final velocity, so that's V. So we don't know anything about S, and we don't have, um, the value for s so we can forget about it so we want an equation that will link a v u and t then so v equals u plus a t now sometimes there's more than one equation that you use sometimes there's only one that you can use um, but if there's more than one it doesn't matter which one you, you pick so put in our values use three a is two T is 5, so that's 3 plus 10, so we have 13 meters per second. Part 2 then, the distance it covers, again, U, B, A, S, T, so our U is 3, our V we found out was 13, our acceleration was 2, we don't know where, so that's what we're trying to find out. And the time is 5. Now, there's a couple of equations we could use here. I'm going to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Now, you could also use S equals a half upon U plus V times T. I've decided not to use that because the V is the one I've calculated myself in part 1. So just in case I made a mistake, I'm not going to use this one here. I'm going to use the S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So 3 times 5 plus a half times 2 times 5 squared. That's 25. So we have 15 plus 25, which is 40. And S is distance. So that's in metres. So then a body reaches a velocity of 24 meters per second after accelerating uniformly for eight seconds, during which time it travels 112 meters. Fine, first of all, its initial velocity. So U, V, A, S, T. So we're trying to find its initial velocity. That's what we're looking for. V, we've got its final velocity. It reaches 24 meters per second. 
in eight seconds uh, goes over 112 meters. So we want a formula that connects V, U, S, and T. Okay, so if S equals a half upon U plus V times T, so get in the habit of writing out the formula that you're using, make it very clear that you know what you're doing. Put in all the values that we know. And this is what we'll have. So I'm going to say a half times eight is four. So then I'm going to divide by four. Get just u plus 24 on this side. So 112 divided by four gives us 28. So bring the plus 24 across and it'll be 28 minus 24 is u. So u is four meters per second and always make sure that your answer makes sense if something is accelerating up to a velocity of 24 then you'd expect your initial velocity to be less than 24 so if you did something silly and you brought like the plus 24 over and kept it as plus 24 you'd have an answer greater than 24 then so you would know that you've gone wrong so make sure like these are practical questions that would happen um in real life so it's make sure that it your answer makes sense. Part two then, we're looking for its acceleration. So again, U, V, A, S, T. So U we'll find now is four. V we were told was 24. S, 112. And T, eight. And we're looking for the acceleration again you can use different formulas i'm going to use v equals u plus a t so that's 24 equals 4 plus a times 8 so 8 a so i'm going to bring our 4 over and have 20 equals 8 a and then divide 20 by 8 and i get that a is 2.5 meters per second squared Example three, a body traveling at four meters per second comes to rest uniformly in 1.6 seconds. Find its deceleration. So again, let's start U, V, A, S, T. So it starts at four meters per second. So that's its initial velocity. It comes to rest, that means it stops. So V is not. And that's 1.6 seconds. Now we've got no letter for deceleration, so we're going to have to find the acceleration, and then I'll show you how the two are related then. So if we have v equals u plus a t, I have naught equals 4 plus 1.6 a. Bring my 4 over, I get minus 4 equals 1.6 a, and then I'm going to divide minus 4 by 1.6 and we get minus 2.5 meters per second squared and you'd expect a negative acceleration because it's slowing down but that's the acceleration the question asks you for the deceleration so we say the deceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared the d bit in it implies that it's negative acceleration okay so if you have an acceleration of minus 2.5 your deceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared and part two then the distance traveled again u v a s t so our initial speed was four it slowed to rest so our final velocity there is not took 1.6 seconds and we find the acceleration is minus 2.5 meters per second squared and we're looking for s so again there's more than one formula you could use i'm going to use this one here s equals a half upon u plus v times t so that's a half upon four plus nothing times 1.6 so four plus nothing is obviously four so multiply those together and we get 3.2 meters.